So <clears throat> we have our service written out in full in the bulletin here. And um, the service was preceded by supper, but it's followed by choir practice and catechism class. So um, we are going to uh, proceed post haste instead of uh, greeting one another like we usually do, just to, uh, I'm sorry, hurry us along, along a little bit. So be sure to greet one another after worship. Let's stand and begin with him 419, him 419. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we gather here on a solemn, reflective Wednesday to be reminded once again that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. This day marks the beginning of our journey into the season of Lent. We join Christians around the world who will take these 40 days to prepare themselves to observe rightly the horror of our Lord's death and to celebrate the bliss of his resurrection. Often in the Old Testament, during a time of intense sorrow over sin, ashes were used to symbolize humility and worthlessness. I repent in dust and ashes, cried Job. Our creator reminded sinful Adam already. For dust you are, into dust you shall return. Today we confess our sins and turn to God. Ashes show that we have no hope of rescuing ourselves. Yet in beautiful contrast, ashes will be placed upon us in the shape of our only hope, the cross. 
by his cross, the Lord Jesus has conquered for us all of our sin, death, hell, and Satan. You are kind, God. Please have pity on me. You are always merciful. Please wipe away my sin. Wash me clean from all of my sin. I know about my sins and I cannot forget my terrible guilt. You are really the one I have sinned against. I have disobeyed you and have done wrong. So it is right and fair for you to correct and punish me. I have sinned and done wrong since the day I was born. But you want complete honesty, so teach me true wisdom. Wash me with hyssop until I am clean and whiter than snow. Let me be happy and joyful. You crushed my bones. Now let them celebrate. Turn your eyes from my sin and cover my guilt. Create pure thoughts in me and make me faithful again. Don't chase me away from you or take your Holy Spirit away from me. Make me as happy as you did when you saved me. Make me want to obey. I will teach sinners your law. And they will return to you. Come forward then as you so desire to receive a cross of ashes on your forehead in token of your sincere repentance before God.
Friends, these ashes marking us declare the truth. Without the forgiveness of our God, we are dust and ashes dead. But the ashes shape declares the greater truth. God sent his only son to die in our place. Because of Jesus' death and his resurrection, God has forgiven all sins. His cross gives us life. As his servant, I forgive you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. invite you to stand as able to uh, rejoice in words from our Lord Jesus himself, the gospel of our Lord according to St. Matthew. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Jesus says, beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you will have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. 
Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trump before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father, who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. And when you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces, that their fasting may be seen by others. <laughs> Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, that your fasting may not be seen by others, but by your Father, who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. This is the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My Christian friends, did you notice when we uh, read that gospel reading a moment ago that it goes from Matthew 6, 1 to 6, to verse 16 to 21, they skipped a chunk, where uh, Jesus in the Sermon on Mount there was talking about prayer. And I can, well, the only reason I can figure out why they left it out is because we're going to say it a little bit later. You know what's left out there? The Lord's Prayer. <laughs> and that's kind of our theme. It is our theme for these uh, six weeks of uh, Lent Wednesdays. Um, I expected our series to begin then with uh, Holy Be Your Name, but it kind of jumped to the very heart of the prayer. Kind of a petition that, that sums up our faith. I give it away on the bottom of that page five, don't I? 
I mean, you put the faith in one word, that's one great word to sum it up, isn't it? I mean, what we believe in is Jesus' forgiveness. And Jesus, in fact, highlighted this part of the prayer. Because after he taught them the prayer, he added these words. He says, for if you forgive others their trespasses, so your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Yay! But, uh-oh, if you do not forgive others their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. I think we're generally people that like the idea of forgiveness, right? Anybody here opposed to forgiveness? Maybe you think you don't need it, if that's true, but I think we all realize we need it. So forgiveness is a good thing. Until I got to give it to somebody that hurt me. And then Jesus seems to make it even harder. Because it almost sounds like forgive us our trespasses as we forgive. Does that mean if we forgive? Or if you don't forgive? Because then, all of a sudden, God's love for me is conditional. God's saying, I will love you if you love that other person. Is that right? <laughs> That's not the biblical message, is it? Everybody likes the idea of forgiveness. You can uh, find some concept of it in one way or another in every faith. Often what it boils down to in the world's religions, the best the world can come up with is you should forgive because who gets the benefit? See, now Richard doesn't know I'm really mad at him, and I'm not going to forgive you, Richard. And here I am, steamed up about it, and getting an ulcer, and my heart is all stressed. He doesn't know. He doesn't care. So, if I forgive him, who gets the benefit? You do. I do. So the world says, by the way, I'm not mad at Richard. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, buddy. <laughs> you better watch out. Yeah. But see, that's not how God treats us, is it? In fact... This is crazy, this idea that forgiveness is for me. I mean, there's some truth to that, but a very little slice of it. I mean, forgiveness is all about love being reestablished between me and the other person, but even that is secondary because forgiveness comes not from my twisted, revengeful heart. Finally, forgiveness comes from God's heart, right? That's where the connection gets made first. So there was this fellow who never wounded those who hated him. And they were so wicked towards him. He had every right to cry out, Father, do not forgive. They don't understand everything, but they know this. I haven't hurt them. They know that I am innocent of these charges. <laughs> you can't even imagine Jesus crying that out. Papa, forgive. And that's where it starts. As we see God's amazing open heart towards us, that's what set our hearts free. And so we forgive, first, because God forgave us. We forgive, secondly, because we want to have that liberation in our own heart then be a blessing to the other person. It's not just between me and God then. It's finally between me and the other person. And that's where Jesus is encouraging us. He knows that we're not always going to be excellent in our forgiving business. It does not stop him from forgiving us. I'm like that child who says, you know, I don't want mommy's food. I'm not going to eat it anymore. Hmm. And you can go like that for a while. But it's like the air around us. The air is always there. Just the fact that we're not breathing it doesn't mean God doesn't love us. But as we breathe it in, he's filling us with that new breath where we then have his forgiveness to share. Father, forgive. They don't understand. So Luther, in his uh, small catechism, sums up this petition very beautifully. I should have written it out for you. I'll probably do that in future works where we can 
read it responsibly, but for the uh, sake of our press of time, I am simply going to uh, pray this with you. Jesus, we pray in this part of the Lord's Prayer that our Father in Heaven would not look at our sins, that He would not deny our prayer because of our wicked hearts. We know we're not worthy of the things for which we pray. We have not deserved them, but we ask that our Father would give us all by grace. We ask that our Father would even give himself to us in you, Jesus. For we daily sin much. We surely deserve nothing but punishment, but you're the one we need. And Father knows it. So too, Lord, set our hearts free that we may sincerely forgive and gladly do good to those who sin against us. For there, again, we will see evidence. You've not only claimed us in the waters of baptism, you've not only fed us at your forgiveness feast, coming to us undeservedly with your own body and blood to make us strong in your resurrection. You even poured out your spirit so that our very mouths may speak the forgiveness to the one who has hurt us that you have given to us. And again, we shall see you are alive, the risen one, even in our simple action. So let us rejoice in your presence. We ask it in your name, Jesus. Amen. Lord, bless and keep you, friends, as you live the forgiveness that Jesus has for you. stand for prayer. <clears throat> On page six, you'll find our responsive prayer. O oh Lord, we remember this day that we are dust. And to us we shall return. O oh Lord, we remember this day that life alone is nothing. Without life together. And that life together is nothing. Without life in you. We pray for all who have strayed from the faith. Father, open all hearts to hear you calling each one to return. Together may we receive grace and mercy for Jesus' sake. We pray for the church, especially where oppressed around the world. Holy Spirit, give to your faithful servants strength and wisdom so that we may proclaim Jesus' good news in honor and joy. We pray for ourselves that this Lenten time we would grow in faith. Savior, increase our trust in you for all we need now and forever. We pray for the nations of the world that you would raise up kindly rulers and provide peace 
and justice for all. Protect and care for those who care for and protect us. We pray for all who are in distress from sickness, poverty, or conflict, and for all who mourn. The living Lord, come with your relief as we prepare to celebrate the resurrection. Enable us to look forward to a blessed reunion with those we love. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray. We trust, we trust in your mercy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should give thanks to you, Holy Father, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. In holy baptism, you called us to yourself. In the season of Lent, you call us to repentance and renewal. We give you thanks that you did not spare your Son, but sent him into the world to offer his life as the ransom for all people. Even now he comes to us as he has promised, the very same body and blood once sacrificed on the tree of the cross, now present in the bread and cup he offers to us for the forgiveness of our sins. By his Holy Spirit, cleanse our hearts and prepare us for the heavenly feast to come. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all of our companions today in heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. bread and drink this cup and proclaim the Lord died for us until again he comes. Amen. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. Lord remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who Jesus Christ on that very night when he was betrayed. Jesus took the Passover bread and when he had thanked his heavenly father, Jesus broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it, remembering me. In the same way also after the Seder supper, Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink from this all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you the forgiveness of your sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. This peace from the Lord be with you always. And also with you.
end with our prayer of thanks. Top of page 10. Page 10. God of grace and mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you reconciled us to yourself. Following his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you and serve one another in holy love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Almighty, the merciful Lord, lead us in the ways of peace. Show us your ways, O Lord, and lead us along right pathways. Guide us on our Lenten journey, that we may keep your commandments. Stay with us along the way, that we may grow in grace. Amen. Recognize it without your whiskers. <laughs>